Hello, geeks, gamers, and freaks. Oh, wait, we're not at Con on the Cob anymore. Hello, geeks and gamers. Matt Lemke with Through Gamer Goggles, and I'm here today at Charcon in West Virginia. It is West Virginia. Yeah, Charcon. Charleston. Charleston, West Virginia. Yeah. That's the part I forgot. Charcon is not the city. Anyway, I'm here with Brian Carnes of, uh, you know, I didn't... Sea uh, Dog Game Studios. Sea Dog Game Studios, that's the part. I love the card over there covered up. Uh, and I've seen Brian around for a while now, and he's got a couple of interesting games, and we're going to chat with him a little bit about them. And uh, we're going to start with Sail Power, which is a really cool Pirates of the Caribbean style game, high seas type of thing. So when did you get the... Uh, actually, Sail Power's been out for quite a while, hasn't it? Yep, uh, Sail Power, uh, I started writing in 2000. Uh, it was originally supposed to be... Uh, a more detailed version of some other things I'd seen out there with pirates. Um, I wanted to have a sailing ship game. Um, you can't probably see that on camera, but it's 120 pages, the rule book. Uh, and there's about 60 pages of hardcore rules in there, uh, of which we can boil that down to about 13 that you need on an everyday basis. We kind of have them like a place map. Um, I didn't have any friends that were willing to play a game where you had to say set your topsails and that sort of thing. I had friends who knew I liked boats and were very happy playing pirates. Uh, but I didn't really want to do something with, uh, you know, like a silly level of there is no wind really uh, or anything like that. So this is uh, meant to be beer and pretzels fun uh, with uh, a lot of real world detail. I'm going to say, I'm going to go out on a limb here that, let's see, the game has been out as long as I can remember it at Origins. So that's going back to 2002, 2003-ish, maybe earlier. Actually, uh, we launched it at Origins in 2005, I believe. Uh, so uh, that's around yeah, there. Yeah, somewhere around there, and it has always been full. I have never been able to play in a game. <laughs> uh, so it must be a pretty good game. And I think part of what makes it cool is the models that I have always thought were hand built but uh, these are resin kits and they're really impressive is this one is this come off for storage? Yeah, yeah we actually uh, rather than uh, build it to a model grade or you know, like a hand built kit we really wanted you to if you're having combat action we wanted you to be able to oh your mask got shot off take it off uh, why not? And for you know, if if you if you're a kid and you want to play this at your tabletop at school, this all packs real nice and neat inside of your lunchbox, and there you go. So if if that had masts and sails and stuff on it, you're really not going to be able to do that. Uh, so I just feel like uh, you know, miniatures are meant to be played with and handled. No, uh, you know, you, it has a lot of benefit to uh, having that uh, take apart feel. With sail power, what is the basic game mechanic? Is it a D6 game, D10, multiple Ds? Um, sail power is based all on D20s. Uh, the reason for that is uh, I wanted to have one dice type so that I could use um, a real world concept. Uh, in the real world, if you're uh, fighting with ships, uh, you have lots of cannon. A lot of them are going to miss, but the ones that hit, those are the ones you got to worry about. So I really wanted to be able to just roll fistfuls of dice, and uh, fistfuls. Yes, so that's uh, for the broadsides. So yeah, you know, we have uh, ships in here that are you know are the size of HMS Victory, 104 guns, um, and uh, that's uh, going to be about 55 dice per side. Chessex loves this man. Uh, I buy them by the hundreds, but uh, that's for me. Yeah, you. you Probably having 20 or 30 is probably good at home. Uh, most of you D&D &D players already have that. Yep. Um, who, and then who, who doesn't have D20s? So D20 seemed like a good way to go. Uh, it uh, is uh, a very basic blind movement system. It's uh, You write down on your piece of paper what your ship's going to be doing. There are some basic rules about how that works, uh, like what you can and can't do. It's nothing to the level of trimming rope or knowing what kind of sail does what. It has a ship sheet that tells you what speeds are available to you on certain headings and you write down left, right, and what speed. And then you lay your ship sheet down, I lay mine down, 
One of these is the ship sheet, I'm guessing? Uh, I actually didn't bring a ship sheet, because okay. I'm, I'm a silly man, I guess. That's okay. Uh, but uh, when you lay it down, uh, then we move at the same time. So if your ship moves here, and I didn't anticipate that, so I plotted to move there, we oh. might just crash into each other. That's awesome! Uh, now, we'll give you a chance. Uh, you know, it's, it's not like... Uh, the, the sailors on the ship couldn't have reacted, so we have some like rules for uh, could the captain have had the wheelman, you know, make a hard over to avoid that, and certain other things are rules in, in the game for that. But there's a chance you'll collide, and sometimes you might even want to collide. In the age of sail, you might want to just hit somebody and board. Um, this game is really based around you being a captain in every sense of the world. Uh, a miniatures game in the traditional sense, if you're looking back at the uh, the 80s, like Wooden Ships and Iron Men, was played in hexes, and it was just a war game. You had scenarios that tell you, these ships fought at this battle, so you play those, and I play these, and we see if we can do it different than history. Well, this is not that game. Uh, this game is, I'm a captain. Well, what kind of captain am I? I'd like to be a pirate captain. Uh, you'd like to be a Royal Navy captain. Well, your priorities are very different than mine. Mine is to get rich. Yours is to sink people like me. Yep. Uh, so you're going to sail out there and try to sink people like me, and I'm going to try to avoid you the entire time. I'm not going to sail right at you. Wow, that makes group games a lot. So more the fun. more players you have, the more fun it is, because now you have this little microcosm of a sandbox. Hence, on your beer and pretzels. Right. So uh, we, uh, we have rules for everything. So we have a treasure hunting system. I, I got criticized by a very strict war gamer who likes it by the book of Hoyle. Uh, he's like, no treasure hunting, please. Oh well. Uh, here's what treasure hunting is. That's what pirates do. Well, it, sort of. Sort of. Actually, if you were Royal Navy uh, in, during the Age of Sail, you probably treasure hunted too. Uh, yeah, ships, for should, lost ships, ships put in every week. Anytime they saw land, they would send some boats up the river. They would forge for fresh provisions, uh, water. Supplies. These, these ships didn't run by you know any length of time. There's no refrigerator. There's nothing to keep them going. Yeah. So okay, they're treasure. Okay. Now some of my treasures are things like cannons or a spare mast or a rudder. That's an abstraction. But it does reflect the fact that you have other ambitions out there other than just combat. So um, I've had players win the game without ever firing a shot. I've had players win by bribery. For example, they bought a warship to protect their loot. They, they got the right treasure early. They had enough loot. Wow. Uh, people knew they had the loot. People tried to come for them, found out that they had already bought mercenaries. That is awesome. We encourage you to be a captain. In the Age of Sail, the captain was kind of a god at sea. He was, uh, uh, all the men had to do exactly what he said. Uh, so they had a you? lot of leeway. Uh, so, so, like in the, in the Royal Navy, uh, that was that was really hard work. But I mean, there there are a lot of other ways to go. There's privateers, which are basically kind of legal pirates. Uh, you know, there's straight up piracy, uh, which you know nobody's your friend, but uh, you can pretty much attack anybody. The Royal Navy they have some rules, but uh, they uh, we've given them in-game advantages for that. So, the Royal Navy, for example, they would have trained gun crews, so they get to fire twice per turn, whereas nobody else does. Wow. Uh, so, so trust me, my little pirate ship sees this. Uh, I, I, I don't want to be here. It wants to run away. I, I, I gotta get out of here fast. Uh, this is an open deck warship, by the way. So everything worth hitting is on the deck. So if this ship targets my deck, uh, there's not going to be much left. In short order, and it doesn't matter how my hull is. It, ships in the Age of Sail didn't really sink each other very often. Uh, later, with the heavy carronades, maybe. But by and large, the way you took a ship was to completely remove its ability to resist you. Uh, and you can do that any way you like. Uh, pirates, for example, like to put themselves right alongside, grape it until there's no crew, and then board. Yep. Uh, or just scare them. Um, we allow pirates in the game to uh, fly false colors. Uh, we have a spotting system that's built into the game, so uh, basically uh, this might actually be a pirate. You'd have to spyglass it and find out. And uh, depending how you rolled, uh, you uh, might get uh, a lot of good information. You might uh, get told by the GM it's a good day to be at sea, or take your lens cap off. There is a lot more to this game than I thought there was. 
other than the cool models. I mean, because they are—they really are cool. I mean, yeah, this is this is basically a uh, fast play miniature system combined with a lot of ad hoc role play, uh, and uh, we're currently working on the 2.0 revision. Um, it came to be that we had enough rules additions that we needed to go back and put that back into the core rule. So I'm a graphic designer working on getting all that content back into the book. Uh, and so in, in 2.0, which is coming out next year, uh, uh, we actually even have rules for things like bar fights, uh, port recruiting. Uh, you can actually play as a merchant, our, our merchant. Uh, Why not just take the step, I mean the plunge, and make the RPG? <laughs> oh, I wanted to make an RPG a few years ago, and I suggested the following. I said, the ship is the character. The ship is a lady. It's, it's, it's something very special. And, and the crew aren't all, all that you know, important. So I said, I, so something like BioWare's uh, Star Wars game, where you have a stable of characters, like the captain and the surgeon and the gunner's mate. And I said, but they can all die. And then the, my role player friend said, well, we don't like dying. I was like, I'll table this for a while. We'll get back to it. But in, in the age of sale, if uh, if your gunner's mate was killed, you got the next guy on the list. That's and right. He was probably a lot like the last guy. So uh, you know, really, the ships were characters, or the captain. Uh, even the captain moved on. I mean, he would move on oh, to yeah, a bigger ship. But so there's so. a lot. Of, we can talk about that later. That, that's a whole different ballgame. So we're getting distracted now. Uh, what else is unique about sail power? Sail Power basically uh, gives you the freedom of exploring that sandbox. Uh, we have beautiful 15 millimeter ships. Why 15 millimeter? Uh, I get asked. 15? Uh, yeah, these are 15 millimeter scale. Um, Holy crap, those are some big guns. Yes. Uh, an average cannon in the age of sail weighed between 800 and 2,000 pounds. This 15 millimeter ship. Is 10 inches. Well, it's actually over 11 inches, but yeah, that's that's a 77 foot vessel right there. And that's from this. To, um, that's from the mast point. Yes. Yeah, so well, or from that's the, that's the just head. from there to there. And it's about 10 inches. Uh, actually, the easy way of doing math on this is an eighth of an inch equals a foot. Oh, okay. So uh, it's it's approximately. 196, 1 one hundredth, 15 millimeter, one eighth of an inch equals a foot. What size table do you need to play on, roughly, for two people? Uh, I get asked that a lot, uh, and I actually, this is me being stupid when I first designed the game. I would bring these gorgeous 13 foot carpets with 30 ships on them, and then I would get constantly from people, I can't play that at home, can I? Uh, that's actually not true. We, when we play tested this, we really wanted the Your game. furniture's an island. Well, and uh, you know, when we play tests, we also played on the floor and the office. You know, you just all kinds of places. Shoes make great islands. Coffee cups make islands. You know, anything can go. Uh, you know, your mind is where it's at. Uh, but we wanted the game to be playable on a three by three. So we <coughs> have a starter set that comes with two vessels, eight guns. They're about five inches long, and actually, we're going to be growing them up to a little bit larger. Like this uh, size here? That size there. Um, and that's, a desk like this, we can have a great sea battle. Uh, you know, That's about five, six inches. I recommend, uh, you know, a, a nice four by four tabletop, your kitchen table, your coffee table is a great way to play South Park. Uh, if you have a friend, you go head to head, you can take a couple coffee cups, set them upside down on the table, you have a game. Uh, if you've got a game club and you have the space, this game will scale to you. We can make this game as big as you want it. We can take this all the way up to ships of the line and 104 guns. Uh, you know, but uh, I, I caution people, you know, people are like, well, you know, I can't really play any big ships. Uh, the interesting thing is a ship like this is more maneuverable, has more flexibility. Well, than a bigger ship, yeah. The bigger they are, like, people try them. And they, 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 it's, you need a lot more space for a big ship because well, turn. and here's something else that people don't consider: uh, managing a big ship. You know, when you, you have little ships like this out there, uh, those ships can maneuver circles around you. Oh yeah. When, when you come, they'll park the ways because they don't want to get anywhere near your guns. But there's an awesome amount of like you can actually feel the weight of it. Uh, people have told me that it's it's, it's 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 really challenging because you're constantly trying to make sure that your broadside 
is and facing that's them. That's right. And your ends, which your your ends have, you know, not how no matter how big you are as so, age of sale, you have very limited guns here. So right. you don't ever want to let anybody back there, and that's stress. You know, you know you. What is the biggest ship that you make right now? Uh, biggest one we make right now is a custom. Uh, 38 gun frigate. It actually probably up arms to about 45 to 48 guns. How many? How big is it? Um, what? Like 20 about inches? that. 20 inches. Uh, yeah, like in, that. in that range. Uh, you know, fully masted. It's, it's so it's about the size of this piece of paper. It's about three feet. Oh, so it's 36 inches. So it's the length of this table here across. Uh, yeah, about if like, you're counting the bowsprit, I mean, the, the hole is about 20. So uh, it, it literally wow. has. Uh, you know, the, these are big miniatures, uh, but most people are going to play a ship that large. You know, most people are, once a year. You know, we've got actually here at Charcon, uh, uh, we actually have the Constitution, which is three feet. Uh, that's actually uh, that's that's a retired miniature. We used it for photos when we took the uh, the, the the pictures oh, the in book? the book. Uh, there's some, like the early, I think, uh, right before the rules start. Well, I'll have to take some pictures of the Constitution while we're here. Uh, I'm retiring it because um, I'm now making my own 38 gun frigate and uh, a one-off. Like you know, you're saying these are one-off. I love to be able to tell people you can build these. Yeah. Uh, and every time I take the Constitution out, it's like, well, you could. You could go out and get this kit, and then I customize them with all these pieces, and I cut this on a bandsaw, and it just, the, you can see them feel defeated. It's like I can't have that dream. I want you to be able to have that dream. I mean, that's why I, I built the kits. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm going to have my own 38 gun frigate out there. Uh, you know, if you want to go haul off uh, a model ship that you get from the hobby store at a cheap price or off eBay, uh, you know, my rules are going to work for you too. Uh, I've had people build Lego ships and play this game with Lego ships. My kids would love that part. So, you know, it, it's as with all things miniature, you know, how you represent it is up to you. Uh, I just hope my miniatures are beautiful enough that people want to spend money on them. I think they look good. I mean, they're, that's really all you need. I, the first time I ever saw them, I've never actually picked them up before today, and I thought they were wood kits that everybody custom built on their own. You know, they're simple in design. They follow the basic principles. You know, they, they're, they're not crazy. It's not like, you know, a ship in a bottle type of model that you're gonna, you would buy that kind of a kit. I thought they were custom kits. Like, you actually got out there and you cut your loom on and you bent it and you glued it onto the frame. I thought they were custom like that because uh, the the proportion of the ridges and stuff. It, I think so that, you, it was a good job. It's with interesting that, that uh, so let me take a, a model like this. All right. So before this is what it is today. I mean, this is pretty easy to put together. You're going to get something that's dyed brown like this. Uh, this is uh, just resin that's dyed. Uh, we actually dye the guns a different color, so that you know, out of the box, if you were just to glue it together, you'd have something pretty much ready to go. Presentable, so you know, not not as pretty as this. You know, yeah, you add paint to make that like that. But you know, where this comes from, you know, since you mentioned wood, uh, you know, I'll start with a, a wooden hull. Uh, I will. Oh, so your your base mo your base models are wood. Uh, I will then take like uh, this is uh, the decking is probably like evergreen scenic styrene plastic like you can get from model oh, okay. boarding. Like yeah. Uh, a lot of the details are actually built out of wax, so like this stern transom here was originally built out of wax. Uh, my family are all jewelers, so right. we build almost everything out of wax and jewelry. Uh, so uh, you know, we you know all these little like these little details and things that stick out here, any of that stuff, that's all wax. Uh, so once we uh, run that in rubber, you know, when it comes out in resin, you'll never know what this was originally. Cause, yeah, because the wax melts out. Uh, and then, even more interesting is that um, since I make a lot of these, I actually don't use a lot of wood anymore. I actually will take my own designs and then customize those. So I'll actually, like, I can cut this lengthwise, rejoin it, uh, modify it, shorten it, lengthen it. Oh, okay. Uh, I use a, I recycle a lot of my detail. So like you know, uh, this particular one, uh, a learning process is you know for you guys, uh, people that have built these ships will put the things in the wrong position. They're like, hey, I know you got instructions here, but you know it's really a challenge. I don't know exactly where I should stick that hatch. Well, this guy here, basically the cannons are glued on. All the deck details that are on here are cast into the hull. 
Uh, and the reason is, I'm, I'm hearing you guys out there, you just want it ready to go. So, uh, you know, originally what I was thinking was that, you know, maybe you want to buy two of these and one would have the hatches in a different configuration. Uh, and so you have different looks from the same kit. Uh, and that's two different, oh, okay. two, yeah. two different mentalities and I have people that love both, so we're not going to stop making the old kits where we have all these as separate pieces that you glued on. But we're going to have a whole line of these that are pretty much ready to go. No brainers. You're, you're just ready to go. Those will sell at cons like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, you just you just paint it and you're ready to go. I take use it over to craft the, acrylics. You know? Take it over to paint and take, and you're done, right? Pretty much. We've actually uh, we'll we'll take our craft acrylics and set them out on the table, uh, and uh, we've had people buy their ship, take it over there, build it with a little bit of glue, paint it, and be playing it that night. So. Yeah, that's what we're going for. Nothing, uh, you know, we want you to have fun with your miniatures. So, that pretty much covers cell power. And we, we can do more stuff with close-ups and stuff here in a minute. 